Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalia Lee. I'm an indie author and freelance editor. And today I am filming a day in the life. Today is Sunday and I wanted to show you a bit more of kind of what I do, what I work on when it's not a work day. Granted, I have a lot of editing work this week, so I might try to get a little bit of client editing done today, but I wanted to kind of show you a slower day in my life. Ooh, Tifa. And I also wanted to use this vlog as an opportunity to talk to you about Whiskey City, to talk to you about the Preptober workbook, to talk to you about NaNoWriMo, and just to kind of give you an update on my life, what I'm working on, what I'm struggling with, all the good stuff. So this is going to be a vlog slash kind of life and project update. So first things first, I wanna go get ready. <sighs> okay, I'm going to get ready for the day, which is something I usually don't even do. I have been listening to Taylor Swift's folklore album on repeat. It is like the only thing I'm listening to right now. And I cannot wait until fall because it is going to be the perfect fall soundtrack. My new favorite song, which she like just dropped this week, I think, is The Lakes. So if you have been listening to Folklore, let me know down below what your favorite song is. And I'm gonna get ready for the day while listening to some T-Swift. So here we go. Okay guys, so I actually have something super exciting to show you that I did not plan on at all. So here we have a proof copy of a very old book that I wrote called Fire Tongue. I'm sure some of you know what that is. I've had a few people ask me about it and I'm not totally sure what I'm going to be doing with it, but what we did was uh, we compiled, it was like in a Scrivener document, so I compiled it, I dropped it into Word, and then Greg took it over into InDesign, which is what he uses to do all of the formatting for Enchanted Ink Publishing. Uh, and he formatted Fire Tongue with some really eccentric designs because we want to essentially take formatting and push it to like the most creative limit we can. And we wanna make sure that all the designs we're creating turn out really beautiful on the page. So I'm going to unbox Fire Tongue and we're gonna see how some of these uh, eccentric design elements turn out when actually printed through KDP. And I'm really <laughs> excited about it because this is, I kind of planned on talking to you guys about NaNoWriMo today anyway, so this is a good way to talk about that too. I am kind of torn about what I'm going to be working on for NaNoWriMo. I'm torn between trying to write the third book of the Pistol Daisy series but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later today because I am struggling so much with Whiskey City. I just don't know if I will have it in me to try to write the third book in November because it, at this point, honestly, if I'm being totally honest with you, it doesn't sound exciting to me at all. Like I'm in a slump with Whiskey City and I will talk about that 
And one of my other ideas was to rewrite Fire Tongue, which does feel exciting, feels fresh and new. We're gonna talk about that later. So, here we go. It is a big book. Ooh, ready? Oh, oh my goodness. This is a really big book. Look, and you can see the black pages. See those black pages with like black designs? So that's kind of what we're playing with. This looks awesome. That looks so cool. Look at how big this book is. Okay, so this page, we didn't, we actually didn't even number these pages, did we? We did not. So I'm not even sure. Ooh, that's really interesting. We did the first two chapters. Ooh. Playing with some black and white themes. That looks awesome. So good. Holy moly. Oh man. Greg is sitting right here, so he's getting to see this like on the page for the first time, like what some of these designs look like. Oh. That looks awesome. Cause we really wanted to know like how um, particular, how accurate is KDP, like how accurate are their printers if we want to do detailed white on black work for formatting. So that's what we are experimenting with here. It looks amazing. We were worried that white text on a black background wouldn't look very, very good, but look at this. It is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So yeah, this was really what I wanted to see. And it looks beautiful. It looks really nice. Oh, oh wow. wow. Did that you look at those pages? That looks really good now. So here again, we're trying to really kind of, what's the term, like push the envelope, push something. We're trying to expand the boundaries, kind of push the boundaries of book design slash book formatting. So we're playing with a lot of different elements that I've never seen in books before. So like here you can see that for the headers, uh, the book title and the author name, we again have it white on black. Let's see. We wanted the header to fade into the page mm -hmm. a little bit. Like, you know, we know what's there, but mm -hmm. it's sort of fun in a design aspect. Yeah, and it definitely does fade. And then we're playing with really fun page numbers, too. Totally non-traditional page numbers. Which turned out beautifully. Absolutely beautiful. This was just, like, basic formatting that he kind of put together to see what these elements look like. And they turned out way better than I thought they were going to, actually. They look really, really good. And I saw a photo in here, too. Now here's another um, style of chapter header he put together. This I think is probably my favorite. How it kind of like fades, so it's a black fade into white with like clouds and stars. Really, really beautiful. I like that one a lot. There it is. Playing with images. It's really nice how we can get the font to really kind of form fit to whatever shape your image is. Well, what's neat though is this, so you not only have it form fit mm -hmm. around the image, mm -hmm. but you have your margin line here, mm -hmm. but we actually brought the photo over the margin mm -hmm. line, which is really cool. So, yeah. it, so it sinks in with the text and then actually bleeds over the margin mm -hmm. line. Overlaps yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's really neat. Which is really nice. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Greg, how do you feel about how it turned out? I had an idea. I'm pretty sure it was, you know, going to be exactly the way I really? anticipated. Yeah. I was nervous that the white font wouldn't look very clear, but the white font is super crisp. It is like perfectly easy to read, even from a distance. You can see how crisp that is. So, there was your little fire tongue unboxing for the day. And again, I am considering rewriting this book for NaNoWriMo, but when I compiled this document for Greg to put into a book, as you can see, it's ginormous. This is, what did I tell you? 140, 160? 140. 140,000 words. I had no idea because I wrote this book before I wrote Way of Spears. So this was, I did two different version, versions of Highborn and then this book. So this was the third book I ever wrote 
It definitely needs a lot of work, a ton of work, but I had no idea it was, I think it was like 148,000. Like a massive, massive book. So of course, the book wouldn't be done at the end of NaNoWriMo because that's only 50K, but I am considering rewriting Fire Tongue for NaNoWriMo, just depending on how I feel about the Pistol Daisy series by the time we get to November, because I am in a super slump when it comes to writing Whiskey City. So if you are looking for somebody to format your book, especially if you are looking for somebody to take your work and like turn it into a work of art essentially and just really push the boundaries of what you like traditionally see in book formatting, definitely come check us out, www.enchantedinkpublishing.com. We have a portfolio up. You can also follow us on Instagram if you wanna see some of the individual projects we're formatting, some of the projects that we are editing, because we're doing a lot of work right now. So make sure you're keeping up with us and come visit our website if you are interested in booking some of this absolutely beautiful formatting for yourself. This is just insane. Like, it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that page. It's turned out gorgeous. Right? Okay, friends. So, Greg and I are about to rent my mom's house to take care of her dogs since she's working today, but... I know it's dark behind me. Um, but I want to show you me putting fire tongue on the shelf because I have like a specific shelf dedicated to books I've written and I have never had a proof copy of fire tongue. So I officially get to put it on my shelf. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, so here we have my shelf of books. I have old highborn, middle highborn. I still, I still have to get a new highborn because we did, Greg did, a brand new book cover for it. I did an unboxing for that. You can go visit it. It's down below, or not an unboxing, a cover reveal. So I, I need to get the third version of Highborn for here. Then we have Way of Spears, um, hardcover Song of the Dryad, paperback Song of the Dryad, paperback Pistol Daisy. We have Whiskey City tucked in over here. And now we have to find a spot for this ginormous book. And because it was my, right here, they're like in order of when I wrote them. So I'm gonna have to put it here. So, I'm gonna have to scoot these over. Oh, look at that. Oh my, this is so awesome. I thought at one point in my life that I would never finish a book. And now look, this shelf is dedicated to my books. Two versions of Highborn. Fire Tongue, Way of Spears, Song of the Dryad, Little Tiny Pistol Daisy, and Whiskey City. That's so awesome. Okay, friends, we are back. We went to my mom's house, took care of her pups. We went and washed the van, which took a ridiculously long amount of time because of how big it is. Uh, we went grocery shopping, went to the bank, and now we're finally home. It's like 4.30. And I'm pretty excited because this evening we are going to a drive-in movie. We're gonna take the van. It has a mattress in it that's actually getting upholstered hopefully this week, fingers crossed. So I will give you guys a van update once that's done and the like mattress is all upholstered and ready to go. So we're gonna take the van, we're gonna open the back doors, just like lie on the mattress with our snacks. So I'm excited for that. But I wanted to show you kind of what I'm going to work on until then. Greg is working on formatting for a client, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on a manuscript critique that I have due a week from Monday. So I have a very limited amount of time now to get it done. So I worked on it yesterday, I'm gonna work on it today. But before that, I wanna show you a brief little desk tour because my desk is, is I'm not sure, what, it's not a mess, but it is not working for me right now and I'm gonna show you why. And I also ordered stuff to fix all the problems that I'm having here. So I wanna show it to you real fast. Okay, so in my last vlog, in my last video, because it's been a week since I posted a video, I was complaining about wrist pain. And actually that was on a Friday that I was complaining about wrist pain. And then the following Monday, so about a week ago now, it got way, way, way worse. This whole hand, this whole arm, was extremely, like extremely painful. It was really tense. 
I was really struggling to use my mouse, struggling to type, and something that Greg actually came up with for me were just these little towels. Like he just took these little hand towels and actually folded them up for me. So this is what is at my desk currently. I have one little towel here because it props my wrists up a little bit. Because one of the problems I've been having are these like bones in my wrists really digging into my desk while I'm sitting like writing all day. And again, this is supposed to be a more ergonomic keyboard. You can see it's kind of split like this, but my wrists still dig into the desk. So I have one here. So this isn't going to stay though. Um, we're waiting on an Amazon shipment to come in. So I ordered a wrist rest both for the mouse. So it has a little bit of padding on it. So my wrist won't be digging into the desk anymore. And then we also ordered one for right here in front of my keyboard, didn't we? Order one for the keyboard? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm not sure how that one's going to work because this is a huge keyboard, but I feel like I'll be able to figure it out and I'll be able to make it work when it gets here. And then I actually got stuff for my desk here as well. Um, I did like an office makeover, I don't know, probably three, four months ago when I got this standing desk and I like redid my office, but something I forgot to purchase was like a mount to hold this monitor. So everything is stacked on reams of paper and random books and art supplies, which I don't like how it looks. I don't like it at all. It looks really funny in Instagram photos and YouTube videos when I just have like stacks of paper and art supplies behind me. So um, there is a little like desk mount coming in that will hold my desktop or this um, second monitor. And then I got a new laptop stand as well. I did previously order a laptop stand, but I think it was actually causing problems with my monitor, my like screen, because it essentially put it at like this type of angle because it lifted it up and then the screen would really have to be at like this weird obtuse angle in order for me to use it. And my screen started having problems, wanting to randomly go out, wanting to not turn on. So that's why I've not been using it. I think it's something that would work really well if I was just like at a coffee shop or just using it here and there. But for full-time use, that's not working for me because my screen was starting to go out. So I did get something for the laptop as well. It's essentially just like a flat, um, tiny little laptop desk so it can pop up and then you can put it back down so you can change the height of it. So I'll have that for the laptop. I'll have the arm for the second monitor. And then of course I will have the wrist rests for both my mouse and my keyboard. And I think that'll help me a lot because the pain in my wrist this week was insane. And I know it was from the little micro movements because I got it mm, Sunday night after editing a YouTube video. I edited a YouTube video and I was actually using um, like the little touchpad on the Mac instead of using my mouse. And those are like such tiny little movements when I'm editing videos. It's like a consistent little micro movement that my wrist was like shot after that. And it hurt probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I, would you say Thursday was when my wrist stopped hurting? Thursday, Friday? It was a while. Yeah, week. Yeah, probably, probably like four or five days. My wrist was really sore. And that definitely was kind of impeding my ability mm. to do my work because it would get so sore, sore during the day. So that is what I'm doing to try to help myself. I also want to order um, those like, what are they called? I've seen like athletes and stuff use them. You like squeeze them and they help build up your finger muscles your wrist muscles, your hand muscles, because I think strengthening all the muscles in my hand, my wrist, you know, my forearm, I think that would be really good for this job too, because I don't want to overstrain my body while I'm sitting here editing every single day. So I'd like to try to take precautions so that's not happening. So if you are somebody who struggles with any sort of wrist pain, definitely let me know if you have any like tips or tricks down below. This setup has helped me, but now I know that in, you know, buying the rest of the things that I need to make my job not painful anymore, I think will make a really big difference. Mew has been sitting here consistently on my little rags, my little towels. Okay, now that I showed you my desk, I'm going to make some sun tea. It is 
cloudy a little well i don't know if it's cloudy or just hazy from all the smoke from the crazy fires that are burning here um the last i checked the pine gulch fire which is burning um i don't know if you guys know anything about colorado but it's burning 18 miles north 18 miles away from grand junction colorado and last i checked it's the second largest fire in colorado like wildfire history so it's really bad the skies are completely hazy like you can't see anything up there it's just like a gray cloud all day long so that's really unfortunate um i am going to still try to make some sun tea today though because we haven't had sun tea in a while we kind of went overboard and made like five bottles of sun tea and at that point we just kind of ended up wasting some because it took so so much time to drink but Let's go ahead and open up my Sips by Box, make some sun tea, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and get started with a manuscript critique. I'll try to read like 50 pages today, which goes pretty fast because the manuscript has a lot of spacing between the lines, so it won't take me too long. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, this immediately, cold brew, this is immediately perfect for sun tea. Cucumber and apple. What do you think, Mew? Which tea do you want? This is pretty. Ooh, fruity raspberry. What's this one? Ooh, green tea with eucalyptus and dragon fruit. That sounds amazing. Hmm. Kanchanjanga? Kanchanjanga? Noir? That sounds interesting. What is this? Greg, what do you think? Should we do fruity raspberry, cucumber and apple, or green tea with eucalyptus and dragon fruit? Uh, green tea. Green tea with eucalyptus and dragon fruit? Yeah. All right, guys, this is the one Greg voted for, so we're going to go ahead and make this one. And remember, if you guys want to be getting tea like this in like a tea subscription box, which is what Sips by is, they send you personalized teas. You have to take like a little tea quiz, little tea test and tell them what kind of tea you like. Um, if you have like allergies, anything like that, uh, you can use the link down below. This is not a sponsored video. I do have an affiliate link though. So it's no cost to you. And I get points if you guys decide to uh, get some teas through my little link. So fall is coming finally which is really really exciting this is like the perfect time to get subscribed to a sips by tea box so make sure that you are using my little link down below so i can get all those points and then i can get more tea all right let's make this In ebooks? Yeah. All right, and then one other thing I want to kind of talk to you guys about before I just like sit down and get to work is actually non-writing related. And it's something that I posted a poll about on my Instagram today. And essentially what I did was I asked my followers over on Instagram if they have any experience struggling with a BFRB, which is a body focused repetitive behavior. And let me get my phone real quick because I'm really fascinated by the percentages that I have seen coming in like throughout the day. Thank you, dear. Greg went and got that for me. Okay, anyway, so it's really fascinating. I'm seeing that about 44% of the people who answered the poll, which was um, yes, I struggle with a BFRB, body focused repetitive behavior, or no slash I don't know what that is. I'm seeing 44% of the 
of people who have responded are saying yes, that they struggle with a BFRB. And this is something that I have never, ever, ever talked about to anyone except my very closest family members and Greg. Like this is something I never talk about, but I wanted to bring it up briefly because I have struggled with a body focused repetitive behavior since I was in about sixth grade going on seventh grade. And I recently found something that fingers crossed, I think is really going to help me. And I wanted to kind of reach out to people within this community and see if other people have struggled with this. And if so, I might want to make a video on this topic, you know, down the line, couple months in the future, maybe if I find that this thing really does help me. So I am fascinated by the results my poll is showing. Um, statistics show that one in 20 people approximately struggle with a BFRB, but I think it's way underreported because it tends to be something that people feel very embarrassed about. So they're not just going to come right out and tell you, yes, I struggle with these things. And my poll is showing 44% right now. So anyway, we're not going to go like too deep into that, but I am curious, like if you are somebody who has a BFRB and you're comfortable kind of talking about it, please let me know in the comments down below if you would like to potentially maybe in the future see a video about this thing that I am hoping, fingers crossed, is really going to help me because I've been struggling, like I said, since I was in like the sixth or seventh grade, which is the majority of my life. So with that being said, I am going to go ahead and create my bullet journal spread for the coming week. I'm going to do 50 pages of a manuscript critique. That is my goal for the evening. And it's five o'clock now. Greg and I are picking up a vegan pizza at 7.30 and then we're gonna drive on over to the movie theater. So I have about two hours to get my work done today and I think I should definitely be able to achieve that. So let's go ahead and get to work. Mm. Oh, also one more thing before I get too sucked into my manuscript critique here. Um, I have had a lot of people recently asking me about the Preptober workbook and if I'm going to have one for 2020 and the answer is yes. I have officially already started working on the new and improved Preptober 2020 workbook. So that will be coming out probably October 1st. I think that's what I did last year. I think we started sending them on the last day of September, like that evening. And then it like officially released on October 1st. Um, but I do plan to have like a pre-order for it. And of course I will like share all the detailed information in the video explaining the Preptober workbook because I do that every year. But yes, I am doing a Preptober workbook. This morning before I started vlogging, I wrote like wrote slash um, kind of planned the first seven pages of the workbook. Last year's workbook was 40 and 49 pages. And I definitely have more ideas this time around. I sent out a newsletter. If you are not already subscribed to my newsletter and you want to be, you can sign up at natalialee.com. And I have like a little link where you can sign up if you're interested. I have a bunch of like downloadable items for you if you're interested in that. Um, but I did sound out an email about that to my newsletter subscribers asking them, you know, is there anything that you really enjoyed? Is there anything that you would like to see added this time around? And I got some amazing responses. So I have a lot of exciting ideas about what I can add to this year's workbook that were not in the previous workbook, the 2019 workbook. So I just wanted to briefly update you on that. I am doing a Preptober workbook. I'm quite excited about it. We are using InDesign this year to do all the design elements because in previous years, I created everything on Photoshop and then had to like drop it into a Microsoft Word document and resize it and it was a freaking disaster. I still was able to make a pretty cool workbook, but this year we're using like actual design software. So I'm excited about that and I think it'll be way easier than using Photoshop and dropping into Microsoft Word because that was a mess. All right, that being said, because I wanted to make sure I addressed that, I am now going to focus on a manuscript critique for the next hour or so, and then probably get ready to go to the drive-in. All right.
Okay friends, it is 6.15 and I just wrapped up my manuscript critique for the day. I didn't quite get to 50 pages. I think I was only, I was only 15 pages short. So I did what, 35 pages? So that's pretty good for a Sunday when I wasn't even like planning on doing any work today. So it's nice that I got, you know, 35 pages ahead on that. Um, I am having a little soup. We're going to uh, have to head out for the drive-in movie very soon. So I think for the next half hour or so, I'm just going to bullet journal, prepare for the upcoming week, have my soup, watch some YouTube videos. You guys, I've been so involved in editing lately that I have not even been watching videos. Like I'm so behind on AuthorTube. I pretty much have no idea what's going on with any of my friends because I've just been in like editing mode. So I think I'm gonna take this time to just hang out, eat some food, watch some videos, prepare for the week. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to try to have two videos out this week fingers crossed. If you're not already subscribed, you can do so at the little button down below. It doesn't cost you anything and you can hit the little bell notification if you want to be notified every single time a new video goes live. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye!